Issues and Trends Impacting the Retail Sector, our front and center now in Zach's Retail Spotlight. U.S. retailers' February sales showing only slight improvement, helped by purchases of those final holiday markdowns, a little bit of pent-up demand for early spring merchandise, along with President's Day and Valentine's Day sales. But as our retail analyst Rob Plaza tells us, or will tell us now on this video, there's still no light at the end of this tunnel, right? I don't see one. Not, not, not for several quarters. Still the overall underlying trend down. Trends are down. People are, are spending less. Uh, they're looking for the best discounts. And the money that they do have, they're spending it on food and gas and staples, things that they need to have. Discretionary items. Out the right. window. All right, let's try and get behind these numbers a little bit here because what I'm seeing kind of uh, differentiates itself from your index, your your retail index that you've put together. But apparently the street is looking for uh, a decline of 1.2% in same-store sales overall for the month of February, despite the fact apparently that Walmart sales jumped 5.1%. They were the big, you know, the big leader. Your index uh, saying something a little different. Of course, you look at your index two ways, right? With Walmart and without. Uh, right. Uh, w well, with Walmart, uh, I've got total sales are up 1.9 percent, and okay. then comps are basically flat. Mm -hmm. And then without Walmart, um, total sales are down 2 percent. Comps are down 2.9 percent. Okay. And reading reading through all the sales reports that that that, that I did go through, uh, Walmart was the big winner, and they were the only one that really said that they're starting. You know, they're seeing more store traffic. People are, are gravitating towards the low price. Uh, Walmart's you know, advertising its price leadership. I mean, they're saying you can come in here and buy your food, buy a TV, buy your uh, uh, staples of things that you need, and you're going to pay less than you would if you went somewhere else. One thing that I saw that hurt February sales, gasoline sales were down at stores, at retailers, that have gas uh, operations associated with them on their properties, especially Costco. They were really complaining that their gas sales were down. Yeah, uh, that, that, that's kind of a tricky subject because last year, if you remember, gas prices were hovering around three fifty, four dollars, depending on where you lived in the country. Right. And so a lot of their customers would go buy that gas at that price to save the nickel or seven cents a gallon, and that flowed right to the right to their top line, right to their revenue. Mm -hmm. Gas prices are cut in half. People aren't buying more gallons of gas, but they're paying that. You know, they're paying less of a, you know, half the price per gallon. Right. So. Right now, you can go almost anywhere and get a decent price per gallon. Right, and and the, that loss of revenue didn't translate into higher sales inside the store. Right. So apparently, even though same store sales are you know a key industry performance metric. Still, the watchword is going to be value here going forward, huh? Oh, absolutely. The uh, the discounters across the board are doing better than your name brands. Anyone that's trying to sell a, a premium type uh, uh, product, whether it's apparel or even even food, uh, say say like a Whole Foods that sells the the organic products. Uh, you know, people are just trading down. They're, they they want to stretch their dollar. Is the underlying trend going to remain down for the full year, oh nine? Uh, it's it's going to remain in place as long as the economy is weak. People are worried about losing their jobs. Uh, maybe worried about losing their home. Uh, so definitely, yeah, that that's going to be a trend that sticks with us even for though, some time. Even though there may be some bright spots out there. Um, and you talk in your latest outlook about uh, a couple of bright spots. Um, among them, the fact that when looking at retail stocks, some investors are of the belief that the worst has been priced in. Yeah, I don't know if I'd call that necessarily good news, but uh, from the time that we that I was here last month, you know, those the retail stocks came down big time mm -hmm. in the month of January, and estimates had come down so low that that most retailers started beating those estimates when they reported their results. So about the beginning of last month, pulled off. I pulled off about half a dozen cells, uh, sell calls and, and lifted those to hold. And we saw some monster moves in retail names where stocks were up 10, 20, 30 percent just, just by coming in line with estimates or maybe, maybe beating by a couple pennies. So overall, your negative view of the industry is based on what? Uh, it's still the long-term trend. We have uh, too much retail square footage in, in this country. Retail expanded along with housing, and as that is contracting and people are spending less in the retail stores, 
there just uh, there doesn't need to be as much square footage as, as that's out there currently. Well, funny you should mention that again, because I know we talked about it a little bit last month. But uh, because of that abundance of square footage that's out there, I'm kind of hearing clamoring on the street that indicates it might be a good opportunity for some private equity money. If Well, the private equity money typically tapped into the, the debt markets and levered up those deals, and those kind of deals are, are, aren't around anymore. I mean, if you look at all the retailers that went private in the last, well, X out 2008, but 2007 to, say, 2004, I mean, th there were several deals where big-name big retailers went private. So you don't think private equity investors are mining the retail landscape for hot deals? No, no, I don't. You don't see it? They say it's a fantastic time for that to happen. Well, <laughs> it's Why a, don't you see it when others do? I don't. Uh, let me share with me some of the logic behind it. It's it's over capacity. Why would you Why would you jump into a business now that has too much, too much capacity, too much square footage? I mean, stores have to be bulldozed. Uh, shopping malls have to be bulldozed. Really? <laughs> I mean, I haven't seen any evidence of that. Where are you looking? Uh, I, I'm looking at what individual stores are doing right now, and they are trying to actively reduce their inventories by 15 percent, 20 percent, 30 percent year over year to keep to keep pace with the, the lower level of sales. Right. Well, that's fine as a stopgap measure if you think sales are going to rebound in the future. I don't see that happening. I think that what we saw over the last 10 years was was fueled by too much debt. Uh, inflated asset values from the stock market and and home prices rising so we all felt wealthier we were willing to borrow against those assets to pay for clothes cars big screen TVs you know, anything that goes into the house and that options not available anymore and it's not going to be there for some time so consumer attitudes towards buying retail items especially discretionary are just they they've, they've flipped the switch and as a result do you think eventually we will see actual store physical brick-and-mortar properties getting leveled? Yes, I do. Uh, what we've seen, uh, when we started seeing this last year, where the worst-performing stores were getting closed and no one was moving into those stores. So you've already got vacant, vacant storefronts, vacant malls in several parts of the country. It's just they've been in economically distressed areas. Oh, I see. So you're taking it, a look at the whole country. Yes. We here in the Midwest may not be seeing it, or out in the east or northeast, but somewhere maybe in the western part of the country they are already seeing it or on the verge of seeing it. Absolutely. But, I mean, an another symptom is that you saw strip malls that were opened up in the last two years that have never had a store occupant go inside. Yes, I mean, that's they, true. They call it spec malls or whatever you want to call it. They were built on speculation, hoping that they were going to get tenants to come in, and those have been empty. Apparently, another thing that's hurting retailers, uh, at least currently, are some retailers have to maintain credit card operations uh, in a time when people are less willing to borrow to go buy. Uh, well, that's part of the problem. The real problem is the people who already borrowed and, and spent money in the stores, and they're not paying off their credit cards. They're getting delinquent, falling behind in payments. And the retailers that own those operations have to now, I mean, they're, they're essentially a bank at that point, so they've got to write down or funnel more, more cash into their equity to support uh, those write-offs. Yeah, and that's going to be a problem for them uh, until those accounts get resolved. Do you see them making uh, their customers the same or a similar type offer that, let's say, an American Express has made? Uh, pay off your balance and we'll send you $300 back? Uh, I, I, I mean, that's a good question. I haven't heard anything other than American Express with that kind of, but, uh, yeah, I mean, anything to get the customer to stay current is, is what any, any credit card owner or any credit card bank would want. To. We may see some creative thinking coming out of that end of retail here sometime soon. Possibly. All right, it's always fun, I guess, lately anyway, talking with Rob Plaza, our retail analyst here at Zach's Investment Research and Zach's.com. And, and soon we're going to not call you the aptly named Rob Plaza because there's a lack of plazas that are going to be out there. <laughs> he said tongue-in-cheek. With Rob, I'm Terry Ruffalo.